The rather colourful keyboard I have next to me is the Easy SMX, well, mechanical gaming keyboard. Doesn't really have too much of a name, but if you're interested in it, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. But the main thing that I want to talk about here is not necessarily the budget keyboard that is next to me, but more specifically, one of the images that they list on their Amazon listing, which is this one. That sounds like a challenge to me. Now you may have seen a number of other gaming keyboards with sort of IPXX water ratings and for me uh, the main one that I can think of is the Corsair, I think it's the K68 uh, which is the uh, kind of waterproof one. It was mostly Asian markets only, they didn't seem to bring it to the UK at least for press samples anyway, um, but they had it on show at Computex a couple of years ago with literally water pouring through it on a constant basis and it worked just fine. Now most of your gaming peripherals are probably going to be quite worried if you spill your favourite soda or water all over them, but with this one, as the Amazon listing says, this is water resistant. It doesn't give an IP rating, but it seems to be quite interesting. So uh, first of all, let's take a look at it. Now it's a fairly standard budget mechanical gaming keyboard. It features uh, AutumnU Blue switches, which makes it a fairly loud keyboard to type on. Here's a quick sound test for you. Now I would note that this is actually, at least for me personally, a nicer typing experience than the new Razer Huntsman, but again that is personal preference so feel free to pick one of these up and give it a shot and if you don't like it I'm sure Amazon will still happily return it for you um, or otherwise generally just try out a number of key switches if you can. I think you can get key testers uh, for fairly cheap that you can just try out different key switch feels so feel free to have a go at those. Now in terms of the kind of added functionality, you don't get any extra macro keys and it's a fairly basic design but you do get an included wrist rest which while is fairly cheap plastic is actually quite nice and overall quite a nice typing feel. Uh, you get rubberized feet on the bottom that can lift up the keyboard to again a pretty nice typing position and you have the function keys with the F row at the top to allow you to do some extra things like uh, media functionality, play pause and that sort of stuff as well as a couple of extra ones and controlling your RGB lighting. The RGB lighting was actually the one thing that I was concerned about here in that there is obviously per key backlighting and you can do a number of options with this and I was worried that when you you know cover the thing in water it's gonna damage the LEDs but um, yeah I was, I was quite impressed with this. So I think it's time to don the lab coat and the safety glasses and head out to the garden to test this in well a lot of water. Now what's interesting is they show the keyboard plugged in and kind of lit up on their advert so I did the same. I had it connected to an old laptop just in case and uh, had it powered on with notepad open to see what would happen uh, while I drenched it in water so let's take a look at that. Now my first impression when drowning this thing in water was actually kind of surprising that uh, all of the LEDs stayed lit the entire time and while I did have a few issues with the X, the 3 and the square bracket keys uh, repeatedly pressing themselves, that's likely just due to water that got in between the two contacts and bridged that connection full time so uh, that wasn't too bad and now that it's dried up it plays and types just fine. Um, I would say that that I poured a, a rather large amount of water. I actually had to pour it twice to get both of the shots that you'll have seen there. So um, I poured probably a liter to a liter and a half of water all across the keyboard. Uh, and again, once it dried out, it was perfectly fine. And even while it was still wet and plugged in, it was all still functioning just fine as well. I even got back to gaming on it with some CSGO and it functioned just fine as well. Uh, there was really no problems with it. So I think overall my general 
seal of approval to this keyboard is actually pretty high. Um, I wouldn't personally put this on my desk, but I would happily recommend it to anyone who's looking for a budget gaming keyboard, and especially someone who's looking for a pretty reliable one. If you're interested in this waterproof keyboard, then you can check out the top link in the description down below. If you have any thoughts on it, I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Would you like to see any more torture testing on keyboards or anything else? Let me know what you'd like to see in the comments down below. And of course, if you have any questions, leave them down there too. If you'd like to support the channel and the shenanigans that apparently goes on here, then feel free to check out the Patreon link where you can support me directly, or the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links, which massively help me out when you click on them before you make a purchase there. You can also check out the merch link where you can pick up t-shirts not like this one, um, or you can obviously just subscribe if you're new to the channel with notifications on for future videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We also do live streams on Thursday, so make sure to say hello there, and otherwise that is pretty much it. You can check out some other videos here, and otherwise thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.